Hey, 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 hi everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'm going to be showing you on how to load your VRM model into Blender. So that way you can be able to do more advanced editing for your VRM models or for your Roid models. So in the description below, you can get a link to this website right here, the VRM add-on for Blender. Simply in order to install the add-on, click on the the purple link here for download latest version and click there. Now there are more information that you can read regarding the VRM Blender plugin if you like, such as creating a simple VRM, humanoid, the material that they have and so on. So definitely give this a little read, but otherwise though, once you have it all downloaded, you're going to then leave your browser and then you're going to go ahead over to, you know, Blender. Now I'll mention this by the way. If you plan on using Cat's Blender plugin or anything VR chat related, um, or just in general, if you're not really someone that tinkers a lot with plugins, I recommend staying on Blender 3.6 LTS due to the fact that it is more stable and you'll get uh, less chance of plugins breaking. The newer versions of Blender, they break the add-ons uh, quite often due to changes in the program. So it's too risky to use Blender 4.0 and above. So stay with 3.6 LTS when possible. But what we're going to do though, and I'll at least mention the VRM plugin does work with 4.0 and above. It's fine, but I meant it for, you know, other users if you plan doing like um, other stuff with it, just stay with 3.6 LTS, stay safe. But you're gonna go to edit and then preferences. You're gonna then go to the add ons button, re uh, the add ons tab right here, and you're gonna click on install right here. Then you're gonna find the zip file, and then you're going to pretty much click on install add on once you find the zip file. And then once um, you click on it, it should pop up. Now for me, I've already installed the VRM plugin already, but it should already like pop up the, like where the VRM, it'll pretty much have like the VRM format. It'll have this typed out. So it'll let you know like it installed it successfully and it'll show you where it's at. And if it doesn't do it, like it, if it doesn't like pop up the search result for VRM, you can try typing it manually. For VRM and see if it's in, if it's like it's there and all you have to do is simply click on the checkbox here and make sure you click on the three lines and click on save preferences. If by any chance the installation for the plugin still fails, I recommend please contact the developer in the VRM add-ons uh, GitHub page because the developer is quite active. So if you have issues, contact them. I'm I'm not the dev, so I can't really help you regarding installation issues. So go there to report the bug. But otherwise, once you have it installed, you're gonna go into File, Import, and then you're gonna go to VRM and find your VRM file. Once you find a VRM, whether it's a Roid model or a VRM model that you made yourself. Wherever the VRM file is, make sure to click on the VRM file and click on import VRM. Now you may get a pop-up message regarding VRM license confirmation depending on where you got the model from. For TestChan, the other permission URL is pretty much just typed with public domain, just to let you know that, you know, do whatever you want. But for some modelers, you may notice that, you know, they may have an actual URL. Some modelers or editors or kit basher, they may have some strict rules regarding the models, whether don't edit the models, don't use it for commercial use, such as receiving donations, don't use it for gore or adult content, stuff like that. So please make sure to check the URL if it does exist. And if by any chance, you know, if the rules are not in your favor, please don't use the model. Don't don't risk a Twitter cancellation. But otherwise, though, once you confirm that you are perfectly fine with the URL and you acknowledge the rules, if any, then import anyways and click on OK. Now, depending on how high poly the model is, whether it's a 500k tri Void model, please don't do that. But if it's a 500 or 1 million tri Void model, it may take 10 minutes or 20 minutes for the model to load. But the lower the lower poly the model is, or the more optimized it is and simple, the easier it is for the model to load. So do keep that in mind that 
keep your models as optimized as possible otherwise you don't want to be waiting like 20 minutes for your model to load and you think that your blender just broke and died so keep that in mind but otherwise though you should be able to use your middle mouse to rotate shift middle mouse or click your middle mouse to pan uh, scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can check this again for some reference. Left click to click on your stuff by the way. I'm just quickly going over this for new Blender users. And then hold the control button and click on the middle mouse to do a slower zoom in and out. Alright, you're at least a little bit more familiar with the controls. Congratulations. So, we're gonna go into the VRM tab. Now, there are many people who, while again, this is still uh, a great plugin to import VRM models, but many people, uh, when they have their VRM models in Blender, many people have always complained about having to reconvert it back, you know, with Unity, like take, like exporting it to FBX and then converting it to VRM, and because how VRM requires you to kind of convert, you know, do the conversion sort of twice. Uh, a lot of people don't want to really, they want to try and avoid the Unity process as best as possible. Now, technically with the Blender plugin, you are kind of, a, a, you know, you are able to re-export your VRM back to normal, like simply with file, export, and then VRM here. You can be able to re-export back to VRM and, you know, after like doing your edits, it's all good and dandy. This is good if you want to you know, not do the Unity method. However, I will say depending on what edits you plan on doing, I personally prefer converting, you know, exporting as FBX and doing the manual conversion myself with using third-party plugins to automatically register my blend shapes again and stuff and copy my physics. That's me personally, but I'm still going to go over these just so you as a user, if you prefer to try and stay with Blender as much as possible, you'll be able to get more familiar with this. So Create VRM is good if you're taking a from scratch model or something like a unique model and you want to have a basic VRM rig. So this is good if you're doing that sort of thing. And then you have the validate VR model. This is good as a checker to let you know, like for example, if the model is in quads, make sure to you know use Control T in edit mode to turn it to tries. Make sure that the model is in T pose, not A pose. And if there's N-gons or if there's invalid materials, it'll let you know if it's if there's some things you have to fix before converting it to VRM. You can export invisible objects or export only selections if you prefer, depending on how much is in your scene. But otherwise, though, it's fine to leave them as is. Now, for people who have been wondering how to convert their VRM, like, let's say they export the VRM 1.0 in, you know, from Vroid, and they're like, oh no, I did so much edits in Unity, and then I'm putting in the Blender, what do I do? Like, how do I put it back into normal VRM 0? Well, you simply just use this, actually, to kind of change it from... VRM 1.0 to VRM Legacy or Legacy to 1.0 simply by selecting this. So remember that. VRM meta is regarding the metadata, which has your thumbnail, the name of the character, the version, who made it, and all this other info. So you can put it depending on wherever you please. So there you go. Humanoid is referring to the humanoid registration for your model. For the most part, most users will just, you know, register the human the the bones accordingly. And you could have utilize the automatic bone assignment and you can save the presets if you want to like load it for other models, especially if you're going to do commissions or, you know, you like have multiple models and you want to make sure it loads the same bones at, you know, every time. So you can have like presets you can do and you can even symmetrize the bow names here on the x-axis if you like, uh, if it's a Vroid model, so that's cool. And yeah, pretty much you just kind of like uh, just make sure that all of this is assigned. Please don't assign the jawbone unless your model, unless like you prefer to use the jawbone, like if you're a furry model or an animal-like model and prefer the jawbone by all means. But otherwise try and avoid this if you already have like blend shades, like remote, like pretty much every Vroid model don't need a jawbone unless again your preference but yeah then these are mainly regarding the unity muscle system this is good for like kind of correcting like the arm twist so if you ever notice like candy wrist or something like that like if you never notice that this is where you'll actually fix those issues same with legs too 
I personally recommend messing with these in Unity itself, but again, if you know what you're doing, you can adjust if you like, or again, just set up in VRM and, you know, or set up, like, when you do FBX to VRM before exporting as VRM, set up with FBX, set up your Unity muscle stuff, export to VRM, and then when you import the VRM to Blender, those settings will be saved here. Once you have that, uh, once you make sure your humanoid is registered, this is where you can be able to add all your blend shape stuff. So let's say for example, you are rigging air kit blend shapes completely from scratch here, but you don't want to like go in Unity and register it all there. You want to register it all in here. So you can be able to click on the plus button after you make your blend shape of choice. Click on this tab here, then you're going to name it, let's say for example, Silly Face or something like that. Make sure the preset's set to unknown, unless, again, if you're registering the default VRM blend shape, that's fine, but otherwise, set it to unknown so it doesn't get confused. If the blend shape is supposed to be snappy, then, you know, snappy and transition, make sure to click on is binary, but otherwise you can leave it as is. And then you can click on the plus button here to add a blend shape. So select the mesh uh, that has the blend shapes that, or the shape keys that you want. And then you can select, let's say, Joy. And you can be able to preview it by holding the one here. And, you know, you can be able to preview your stuff here. But otherwise, you know, you can set up your blend shapes or shape keys here. You can set up your material values here. So you select the material of choice. Let's say body, you can set the material or the property name and, you know, set it up from here if you like. But otherwise, um, you know, this is where you can be able to create your blend shape solely in, like, again, you'll actually, where you'll actually create your blend shapes will be in the object tab and in the shape keys area. Please don't mind the fact that this is called shape keys plus. It's an add-on I'm using. Otherwise, it's the same as the default one. But... Pretty much here, you know, you got your, you know, you got your blend shapes. You could be able to test your stuff here, but this is where, um, when you register here, it'll be detected when you export it as a Vera model. So there's that. Now, besides all that uh, stuff, first person is referring to when you're using the Vera model for VR use. That's pretty much what this is. So the bone here should be set to head. You could um, mess with the first person bone offset, but otherwise you can leave it as is. The look at type is referring to how your eyes are gonna be moving for the default VRM blend shapes. You can set it to bone if you prefer bone eyes, but you can also set it to blend shape eyes if you prefer. It's just a matter of preference. Most Void models will stay with bone, eye with bone eyes, but certain models may prefer blend shape eyes for extra control, so there's that. Now, make sure that you also set your mesh annotations, so if there's any, like, meshes, let's, let's say, for example, I add a top hat to my character, make sure I add a mesh annotation for that top hat, for instance, so make sure all your meshes are defined here. I recommend leaving this auto. Whenever I try setting up these, it ends up either breaking them all, or breaking it when I'm using it for VR stuff, not like VR general tracking, just if I'm using a like, tracking world, for example, this can mess up. Or VRM will just kind of force it to be auto. So I recommend just leave this at auto. Here, this is where you can tell VRM how far your eyes should move at certain axis. Like if my eyes, let's say if I go to pose mode here. And let's say I select these two bones here. Set this to individual origins and I press R and Z and do this. It pretty much controls how far your eyes will move when it's in, like, you know, in some. Again, I'm still able to rotate as far, like, here as far as I want. But when it comes to, like, you know, depending on the programmer, um, like, if they have the eyes following or something like that this is where you'll adjust your settings or again let's say you're trying to do eye tracking and you notice that your eyes are not moving you may want to increase the range or if your eyes are moving too much either you edit in the settings or you edit it in here so this is where you can adjust your eyes eye movement 
I personally recommend adjusting the first person in Unity because it's just easier to test there than here, but it's alright. Springbone, I definitely recommend stay with Unity on this part because you can't test these physics in Blender, sadly. Now, there, I've seen, I saw someone was able to get it working with a custom script, and hopefully they'll get that. Um, hopefully they'll get, you know, so that script can be used publicly. But again, I can't confirm when they'll be. But at least uh, for now, this is, I recommend, like, if you are putting your void model and you're putting it here and you're just doing quick edits, just keep the spring bones intact. Don't delete this collider list and stuff. So just keep it intact. You can be able to add spring bones or collider groups if you like. Again, you won't be able to test it, but if you want to just add something really quick so you can avoid Unity, then you can do it here. Or just reference the other, like, physics things if you want to just copy paste it to just kind of make life easier for you but otherwise this is something I prefer for unity but your choice but that's pretty much the VRM plugin here now I will also mention if you're gonna do kit bashing where let's say I kit bash a dress from gumroad or booth and put it on test chan please keep in mind that you have to go into the material tab as well find the materials that are made from that outfit and make sure to set that material to enable VRM Mtune only if you're going to export solely in Blender. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if you're it doesn't matter if you're gonna do the FBX to VRM method, the manual method. Like it'll it'll force your materials to be a uh, prin um, principal BSDS anyways. But if you're gonna export your model from Blender into a VRM format, please make sure to set this up. Otherwise, if you don't. And, like, again, if you want realistic shading on your model, you can stick with just, like, make a material principal BSDF. You just slap on an image texture and it should probably load fine. Again, any other extra settings you have, like specular, subsurface, and stuff, won't translate due to the limitation of VRM being a universal format. So, keep in mind, you can't be too fancy with Blender. So, I recommend keep it simple. Just make sure when you're exporting VRM solely in Blender, just make sure all your materials have this enabled, put your stuff according to how you usually do it in VRM conversion, and you know, you can export away like that. You should kind of still see like a preview of how the materials will look here. Thanks to this, it's again, uh, there may be some imperfections, but it should be fine. Now, in case you're wondering a little fun fact regarding these outlines, these outlines are actually handled with uh, geometry nodes, actually, which is actually quite impressive that they do that. Do keep in mind, though, if you are going to be exporting the model into FBX by any chance and you have these outlines, you may run into issues with these guys. So I recommend if you're going to do uh, export this model as FBX, please remove these uh, geometry nodes here just so you don't run into those issues and also miss you know have missing blend shapes apparently but otherwise if you're exporting out as VRM solely in blender I'd leave these alone but that's how you'll add your outlines by the way but overall that is pretty much at least in a nutshell the VRM plugin not only how to put your VRM model in uh, or your Void model in Blender, but also getting more familiar as to the plugin on like how you can be able to export solely in Blender, what are things you have to keep in mind about, keeping in mind that there is the VRM material here, so that way, you know, you can do some cool stuff. So I look forward to seeing what you guys will do with the plugin though. And again, you know, keep on studying. If you have issues with the plugin, please contact a developer via GitHub regarding your issues. But otherwise, if you have any questions regarding 3D VTubing, feel free to let me know. I have my Discord server in the description below, as well as resources um, regarding the website and other learning materials down below. Other than that, though, I hope you guys have a lovely day, though. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you to all my Snowflake members. In case you don't know, I have YouTube membership, so if you want to further support this channel and what I do, then feel free to join the Snowflake members. Otherwise, though, just your support means so much to me, and I appreciate every ounce of it.
Either way, though, with that being said, though, hey, 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 goodbye, bye, everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye.